talk to you about, about the uh, proposed badge of Carl. As I said, he's open to questions during his um, talk, or if you want to chat to him afterwards, you're more than welcome. Let's make him feel really welcome. Let's give a round of applause. Welcome Joe to the microphone. Hi. Um, this is a badger. She, she's a little uh, stage shy, actually, but um, I've got a lot of props, so that makes you think I'm really prepared, but I've been busy helping steward the vegan cafe all day. So what I want to talk to you about is, I don't know if any of you have heard about badgers and TB being in the news recently. Um, cool. Well, not all of you have, so if I just go through um, badgers, which look like this. It's a slightly more anatomically correct badger. Uh, one of our few native <laughs> British mammals, uh, because most of them, like wolves and bears, we have hunted to extinction on this island. And um, whilst their numbers have increased a little in the last few years, they're still way beyond history, way, way tiny proportion of historic levels. So, um, now, in the last few decades, um, there's been... Uh, I'll talk to you a bit about badgers, actually, because in case any of you don't know about badgers, they live in barrels. Um, they have pathways. It's uh, probably not the word. But they have... They, they, um, uh, creatures of routine. They have little sets underground. Um, they have uh, different rooms, so different things in the sets. They have a uh, latrine. They're very clean animals. And they also... Um, they have, in some, they were a protected species, um, both internationally and under UK law. Um, and they uh, have sort of uh, paths that they use over, I suppose, many thousands of years. That, um, and when they often get run over, there's a high number of fatalities on the roads um, because of that, because we've uh, put roads in the way, or motorways in the way of their. Anyway, the point is that uh, recently um, there has been some proposals by the government to have a massive cull of 70% of badgers in a, initially in the whole of the southwest of England, um, and that is because they spread something called TB, bovine tuberculosis which is a little bit like human tuberculosis, but not the same. And uh, we don't get bovine tuberculosis, at least not from contact with cattle and badgers. Um, there are circumstances in which we can, but it's not as harmful as the full-on tuberculosis. However, um, even though um, it's not actually um, a danger to humans, um, Farmers are losing a lot of uh, cattle uh, increasingly um, through um, the spread of the disease. Um, and they believe that some farmers, not all of them, um, an increasing number of farmers are, are taking an anti gold stance at the moment, uh, believe that the tuberculosis is being spread by the badgers and therefore the government has decided to call them to support the National Farmers Union, despite the fact that a lot of the scientific research that and uh, trial culls um, that have occurred over the last decade have um, shown an increase in TB uh, after culling the badgers, um, and that is because. Uh, I might as well explain why that is. The, there's a little diagram here which I would like to have projected, but couldn't get online to do it. Um, there is a pre uh, before the cull, you have a, a high infection area where they want to cull the badgers, and then outside of it, you have a low infection infected area. Um, once the territory of once that territory becomes open, because the badgers within the, that local set have been um, culled, um, I'll talk about how they do that later, 
um, the, there is a massive increase in badger movement, movement because as I say, badgers are creatures of habit and they follow set paths, so they don't come in contact with other wildlife as much as, you know, uh, most wildlife would. And so the, all the other badgers come from outside. There is, they can't cull every badger because they're nocturnal creatures that live underground and they're hard to find, which is one of the problems they're in been experiencing with their current plans. Um, so badgers from outside come into the cull, cull area where the badgers have TB, and they get TB too. And because they're moving around, because there's a, a, the, the, they all have, obviously each set has a territory, and because there's a change in the balance of power and the, uh, the, their territories, they kind of come in, they're moving a lot, which is how they're more likely to spread the disease. Badgers do spread TB, um, but they're not actually the primary vector for it. Um, there have been a number of studies on this. Some of them, British studies, which show that um, cattle to cattle is a, a far greater vector than badger to cattle. Um, badgers are as likely to die of TB as cattle. So they're kind of... Um, not a vector in the sense of a vector that transmits it like rats do with the plague, etc., and does don't get it themselves. Um, so it's, it's it's if anything more likely to go from the cattle to the badgers than vice versa. So um, I'm going to see if anyone wants to ask any questions. Actually, just for a minute before I go on to the next section. Right, okay. Um, you're asking me how it, how cattle get it. Yeah, if, it's not, if it's not badgers, if right. it's transmitted amongst cattle, can you tell me how that happened? There hasn't been a British study on this, but according to, I think it was a South American study, but that one of the, um, I think there was some studies in Europe too, one of the prime, probably, what they, this study showed was the largest vector wasn't actually, was actually cattle to farmer to cattle, because Farmers don't have any kind of, um, when obviously they move around a lot, but farm hands, farm workers move from farm to farm and they don't disinfect themselves against, so they're transmitting it on their own bodies. Um, secondary, secondary they're, they're, they do not test badgers for TB and they do not vaccinate them, which I'm going to go on to in a minute. So it can move, um, it can move quite, and, and obviously, Although, although DEFRA do keep records of where cattle move, they do regularly move from farm to farm. So that cattle to cattle is, is a secondary method of transmission. And then, obviously, badgers, badger to uh, cattle is, is also a significant method of transmission. How large is a badger's territory? And when those badgers have been culled from, how far away will other badgers uh, move in and then potentially move back and spread the TV? Um, the answer to the first question, and I'm not actually an expert on badgers themselves, I know it probably varies from place um, to place. Is I, I think you're talking females. I'm not sure about that. I'll okay. check. Um, the answer to the second question is it depends. They will spread, and um, they will spread from as far away as the cull area. So that their plan at the moment is the government's current argument is you have a. Uh, they've tried culling like a small area, say 10 miles radius, where they filled as a build up of TB. They um, found that the badgers, um, they found that after doing that, there was a slight reduction in TB. But there was an even greater, although again not massive, but there was an even greater increase in TB after a few years. Their argument is, if we cull like a massive section of the country, which they're still calling a trial, um, then we will, then they won't be able to come back in. But that's not actually what's going to happen because they breed, and it, they, they don't, oh, except cars, they don't have like they're an apex, you know, um, species at the top of the food chain, so they don't have any predation. So. Where if you cull all the badgers in an area, 
that one of them comes in from outside, then they have cubs within a few years who go to and spread, just carry on spreading exponentially. So, um, in fact, their argument that it will take many more years isn't true. It will probably take almost the same time, but just for, just that's just sort of basic common sense science. If there's nothing else keeping the batches down and they don't go and have another coal quickly afterwards. Um, right, I'm sort of rambling on about boring sciencey detail and I could go into more detail on that, but the important point is that we there's been a recent uh, the, the reason why traditionally cattle, and I'm not even arguing that badgers should be vaccinated, although they don't have done that in other areas, cattle haven't been vaccinated in England, which they have in Wales. I don't know if any of you heard about the Pembrokeshire proposed car. Um, what happened, and I can't see that um, it's any different from this car, in fact, the vaccination has improved since then, um, and the alternative methods have improved. That was a proposal by the Welsh Government, um, originally proposed by Plaid and then Labour, Welsh Assembly Government supported it, as they were then, um, and that resulted, the result of that was that the Badger Trust had a judicial review and the decision was found to be Wensbury unreasonable, as in no sane person would make the decision that the Minister made. Um, because it went against his own scientific advisors. And, and the, the, the point to be clear on with this is that not only are 85% plus of the public in all the recent surveys against culling badgers, but 99% of scientists are against it, and 100% of the research shows that it will either not make any difference or make the problem worse. So this isn't really a... This isn't some kind of, this isn't really based on science at all. This is based on trying to um, appease a, the you know, uh, hunters and some farmers. What, what is culling? Yeah, um, there are kind of different methods. Um, you've probably heard of badger baiting. There's been. I don't there's been some of that going on around here. Well, it's 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 a method. It's not one they're going to use, obviously. Um, there's also there's also gassing the sets. Um, their current proposal is to um, shoot them. Unlike the previous trials, they are not actually they're not actually shooting them sort of in a um, controlled way through a central company. In fact, they use I can't remember what they're called. They use a South Wellian based company who we're going to use, the Pembrokeshire Cult, who specialise in um, science. They're a scientific company, they're a zoological company. Now they're just giving farmers and I think also local security guard firms who farmers have employed the uh, licence, which is obviously necessary because it's illegal to do anything hard to harm a badger normally. Um, to uh, go out with shotguns or and shoot them. Um, that's that's the, the the method they're looking at. It's um, as I should. I'm going to go on at the end to what I'm just going to move on to what's actually happened regarding the current poll. But one of the things that's happened is that they've realised that that's going to cost them a lot more than they thought. Um, that there are more badgers than they thought in the cull area because they're nocturnal and hard to find, and that, um, well, Joe, basically, that, that method is, is a lot more difficult and more costly both for the government and farmers um, because the farmers are paying for the shooting, but they're not paying for the policing, and they were supposed to be paying for finding the badgers, but the government are having to do that for them because they, they haven't managed to find any sets. Um, you told us you were going to tell us about the inoculation, uh, the vaccination, sorry. Yeah, sorry, um, I'll, yeah, um, on the Pembrokeshire, um, what's happened in Pembrokeshire is they're actually now vaccinating them. Since the decision by the High Court that it was illegal, which um, I can only assume is going to carry on, 
Um, Wales is now vaccinating badgers, and the Welsh Labour Party and Plaid Cymru have uh, decided to be opposed to uh, a future culling. Um, the way of vaccination, the reason why vaccination hasn't, over the last 30, 40 years, been a method that they've used is because it tends to, um, it makes it extremely, it has traditionally made it very expensive to, I'm talking about vaccinating cattle by the way now, um, which obviously would solve the problem because if they're vaccinated, if they're inoculated, there's no way they can get it from the badgers. Traditionally, once you vaccinate cattle, um, the more simple, cheap, and easy to administer, to administer tests on meat and cattle, um, which I can't remember what it's called, but where you just, it's the same, actually the same one they use on humans, um, where they do a little pinprick, um, actually cannot distinguish between bovine, uh, BTB and BTB vaccine. But, there's now been a uh, recent um, British research, actually, um, which has shown that um, there is a method that is as cheap, and they haven't actually deployed that yet, but um, they were working on doing so, that will distinguish the two. The other, blocking, the other block, which according to Patterson, who's the Secretary of State for the Environment, he said that he's been working on for the last two years to uh, bring a motion to the European Union to change, is that the European Union has a ban on the importation of um, meat that shows up on the simple test as having BTB because it's been vaccinated. But now there's an alternative test, that would be quite easy for them to bring a motion um, to change through, through Europe um, so that we could export uh, beef and, well, just beef and beef because milk, obviously, BTB doesn't actually go in milk, which might be a, something you guys are wondering about. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have a roving mic, but um, the lady on the room therapy stall was just Chinese, Chinese medicine stall was just saying that um, one of her friends has um, been successful in treating TB in humans with um, her, her, uh, holistic method. Oh, cattle! All oh, right, uh, treating cattle with uh, holistic methods of medicine. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Is that to prevent them getting TB? Yes, the farm manages this cattle, the only cattle I have, is TB. That is also true. Yeah. 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 So I think, although I haven't actually in any way followed my <laughs> planned order, it's a bit garbled, um, I think I've covered most of, 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 of what TB and badges, why it's an issue. Um, one, of, one of the other things that I wanted to mention was that um, last week the government's plans for a cull have been, were delayed on Tuesday um, because um, they've given a whole bunch of reasons. Um, here are some of the press articles. They said that costs have forced a rethink Although when the minister went to Parliament um, at his request to discuss this, he had no idea what the costs were. Um, he said they could be as much as possibly a billion, and that's an actual quote from Hansard. Uh, um, which is sorry, that would be sorry, that would be sorry. That was actually a, a question about the costs of not doing it, and he said the cost of doing it could be as little as a pint of. Um, yeah, I think he was exaggerating. Um, he was quite bad at answering questions. Um, 
maybe not quite as bad as me. Um, but um, he was he was actually sort of um, floundering, um, and so he's announced a delay till the summer. The official reason originally was cost, and he's now said it was because um, they can't call the badgers. They haven't got time to call the badgers before they hibernate, which is something they could have predicted. He also blamed um, them not being able to conduct a call during the Olympics, um, and for PR reasons and security reasons, and not being able to conduct a call while it was, while it was raining. Don't quite understand that one. I'm not aware that badgers don't come out in the rain. Um, I think it was more that the uh, people shooting them didn't want to go out in the rain. So that, that was the uh, official reasons given, and as a consequence of that, the coal proposals in the southwest of England um, have officially been shelved until the summer, but he's very adamant that he's going to go ahead of that. Um, on Wednesday, there was a parliamentary debate on a motion that, last time I checked, about a week or two ago, I had 170,000 signatures, or sorry, a petition on the Number 10 website. And if it goes over 150, it automatically um, pauses a six hour debate in Parliament, which occurred um, the day after um, the Secretary of State's other announcement. Although, um, unfortunately, the Secretary of State uh, was again quite evasive. Um, and it's, I've been kind of involved in, you know, I'm not an expert on. Badges or TV, but I have been involved in politics in the past, and that is, this is probably, even though I'm biased and was on the other side of the campaign, one of the most embarrassing things that the Tory government has, at least in terms of the fact that they've deliberately ignored all the empirical evidence, and they came to Parliament to give speeches without having any of the facts. Um, he actually walked out, the debate on Wednesday, the Secretary of State walked out of um, I can't remember muttering something about the fact that he wasn't interested in having a debate. Um, so um, that, that was interesting and uh, we need to keep up the pressure I think, those of us who don't want badges to be told. Do you have any finishing thoughts or ideas on what you suggest that we need to try to solve this problem? I mean, I, I kind of assume that most people here have, well, I haven't, I've actually gone through the, the scientific reasons, which are it's going to cost more and it's going to make the problem worse, but obviously there are a whole bunch of moral reasons, which I'm sure some of the other speakers like Roger Yates have talked about, um, why this would be a bad idea. Not least the fact that um, we've lost, uh, we, we have very few species in this country, native species, and we've lost a lot of our biodiversity, and they are still a rare, uh, not endangered anymore, but uh, uh, considered rare. Um, yeah, so what we can do, uh, well, I made, I made a little slogan here, which Mitzi has turned into a poster with cows and badgers on. Won't inoculate cattle, don't exterminate badgers. So, yeah, um, and I think it's, it's, a very, it's a very easy issue to campaign on because um, everyone loves badgers and it's very, uh, they're very sort of, I was going to say sexy, that's probably not the right word, but um, cuddly, cuddly, that's the one. Um, so, yeah, um, um, you can get badgered up, as we call it. <laughs> Which is always good. Um, just needs a bit of black and white paint. And uh, so we're going to do demo. Sorry. It's a very emotive issue because now that the farmers want to put down their cattle, I agree there needs to be a solution. And if you say that you're not the um, different types of tests or you're not creating capital, that's going to be available. Maybe that's going to be the solution for it. Because I, I hate to see that the badgers fell, but I also feel sorry for farmers that lose their cattle. So there's got to be a solution that suits everybody. Absolutely. Um, um, well, I, I, maybe, yeah, not, I, maybe not for everybody, because there wouldn't be any cattle then. Absolutely. I think someone has to state that 
we wouldn't have uh, any meat for cattle. And um, whilst I'm, I don't in any way sort of agree with the argument that someone, some charities like the RSPCA might put forward that the important thing in uh, in terms of our relationship with animals is to get rid of any of their suffering. So, um, in other words, if we put down a lot of animals, that's good. I do think that not giving birth in the, you've probably seen the Matrix movie that was on earlier, cartoon, I'll stick it on after this, not, uh, you know, pro producing loads of cattle, so being in a situation where they wouldn't exist in the first place, um, would be really good for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, not just the fact that they're, as Roger was talking about, their cows are take their captive cows, their calves are taken away from them at birth. Um, they're in terrible conditions, um, but mainly because if we didn't feed cattle, we would have enough. They're generally fed on soy. We would be able to feed that to. We'd have enough food just to, with that. You know. With, with the uh, food that we feed to them to uh, feed all the people who are hungry in the world and that's kind of it is a I, I haven't got a source for that um, I, if you want to talk to me about that kind of stuff afterwards I do have kind of some information and some sources for the facts I'm giving out so any more questions? Um, sorry you, you mentioned that the tea doesn't get in the milk. What, uh, what, what parts does it infect, or how does that work? You said you weren't an expert on it, but you said you could explain more. Yeah, um, I'm not actually... I, I'm not... Um, I was going to... I haven't had a chance to... I haven't managed to get online. I was going to read a paper on, on this subject before I gave the talk. I'm not an expert on bovine TB itself, but... Um, so I, the question was basically... Um, how, how, what parts of the, the meat do they get in? Right. Um, I. It is in the meat. They test the meat for it. It doesn't go into the food chain if it does have bovine tuberculosis. Um, bovine tuberculosis, and I'm, this is an area I'm a bit, fudgy, a bit unsure about, but it, it, is, it does have less of. Um, it can't be transmitted to humans by touching cattle or badgers in the same way that it can be transmitted between the two. It, it's not quite, it's not, uh, not only is it not as infectious, it's not actually, um, whilst humans can get bovine TB, which is how the human vaccine against normal TB, uh, human TB actually works, they inject you with bovine TB. So it's, it's, um, it's a genetically altered version of bovine to TB to make it a bit less potent, but um, originally they tried it with actual bovine TB. So um, bovine TB has, uh, can be, inf can be, inf humans can get it. It's extremely difficult for them to get it. This is all I know. Um, and when they do, it um, is less, far less serious than human TB. Although um, I should probably mention that I mentioned farmers and cattle as larger transmission, uh, as being in most of the studies showing as, as, as bigger trans, uh, tr transmission vet methods or vectors for, for the disease. Um, cats, dogs, um, and most nat uh, native mammals except humans, um, if we count us as native, in, 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 in the British Isles can actually... Um, are also vectors for the disease, um, so including rodents. Um, so there's, 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 you know, um, just blaming it on the badgers is 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 also a problem. Um, the, the there does seem to be there are a lot of badgers there are a lot of badgers farmers in the cull area who are opposing this um, and aren't letting are trying to stop them killing killing badgers on their land because they are worried about. The, um, there is even a rumour that the NFU may be having second thoughts about the plan. Um, so um, that's kind of because um, obviously it's a very, um, they're not even considering this as part of a number of options to eradicate TB within the cold zone. Um, and I think it's, it's 
It's been something that farmers have been campaigning for a long time for, and a lot of farmers are now, and have been in Wales, which was one of the reasons why it was reversed and they're vaccinating them here, have been coming around to the idea that um, the other methods are more efficient, and even the farmers who are in favour of the coal believe that there needs to be more, many of them believe there needs to be more use of, of, of other methods, but um, the Tory government are, uh, it's a bit, I, well, I think there is a suspicion by a lot of people that this um, is, they lost on the hunting bill, and this is, is really a way for them to um, employ um, friends of theirs to shoot things. Um, rather than simply on the basis that the government's own scientists are nearly all against it. The head of the Royal Society has recently, a few days ago, um, Royal Society of Science, has, has set, who was a former chief government scientific advisor, has recently said that this is absolutely not uh, evidence-based policy, and it's policy-based evidence and that they are very much reading reports by their own chief scientists which say mainly this is a bad idea and have give a few pros in favour. And they're very much cherry-picking and only mentioning the parts of a single study that support their point of view. So this, you should just be against this on the basis that politics and policy should be, should be governed by actual evidence. I'm going to um, finish up there, um, and if you want to ask me any questions afterwards, anyone, I do have a lot more details and scientific evidence. Thanks a lot.